All right, guys. So we're going to go ahead and start the manufacturing process of the uh, solid core motor mount plate. Now, keep in mind on this plate, what we're doing is we're going to we're going to the first stop is going to consist of machining eight parts at one time. So it's going to look something like this. So we're going to run pretty much eight of them at one time. So we're going to come down with a facing tool and face across. And then we'll drop a one inch in mill down, uh, two fluter, and cut the side. Okay, and then you'll just rotate the stack and do the same thing. So that'll be the first op. And the second op, we're actually going to lay it out and, um, and actually machine the, the core geometry. <clears throat> okay, so since we're going to face it, uh, we have a couple of different options. Uh, what I would do is just draw just like a 2D uh, rectangle and they kind of represent what the parts are going to look like. Um, <clears throat> so it's going to look it's going to look something like this. So I'm going to switch views into a view like this and we'll create a sketch right here. And what we'll do is we'll draw a rectangle and what we're going to do is since we're running eight pieces at a time and they're a quarter inch thick that's going to be two inches wide so we'll just do a straight two inches and I'm going to keep that rectangle we're just going to finish that sketch so that's actually going to represent our part so what we'll do is we'll go down to manufacture and we'll go to setup. And let's see our orientation. We'll select our Z axis to be the top. And our X, we'll make our X axis. We'll, we'll keep the X that it gave us. But we'll make our origin on this corner right here. So it looks something like that. And basically what we're going to do is just face across. So operation one is just going to be squaring the part up. Um, also, if you want this document with the print, I'll put it in the description area. Or you can download it. Okay, so my stock. So we have a... 2.75 across and two and a half down. Uh, we'll do do a fixed size box. This will be 2.75. And our Y will make it two inches, but Instead of center, we'll offset the Y from the positive. Let's see, we'll do an offset from Y negative, just like that. So we got something, something that looks like this. And two and a half, that's right. So we'll make that our stock on op one. So I'll go ahead and name this. Op one. <clears throat> go ahead and save it. And once we're through with op one, what we can do is we can hide that rectangle we drew up. Just like so. Okay, so op one, all we're gonna do is face it. So I'm gonna go to my face operation. Uh, we're using a we're using a four inch uh, base cutter. So our RPM is gonna be kind of slow. So I'm gonna go to, we'll do it 1500. Cutting feed rate, 20 inches a minute, should be good. Our geometry, that'll be our selected geometry. And what we want to do is so we'll face down to zero.
We'll make our clearance at point one. Should look good. Um, let's set up our tool. So I'm going to go to milling. We'll use a face mill. We'll just add this to our library. We'll call it a four inch face mill. The cutter, the only thing will change, we'll just make this four inches. Leave everything else default. <clears throat> Cutting speed. Twenty inches a minute. Our vertical feed should be thirty. It's not actually it's not actually gonna cut anything uh, vertically. Uh, post processor, we'll make this tool one. And we'll call that good. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit OK and see what kind of tool path it gives me. Uh, you want to make sure that you're coming down next to the part and feeding in to the side. We can actually decrease that lead in also. Uh, I'll go to my linking tab. Um, what do we have here? It's not too bad. All right, so it's going to look something like this. Just one straight cut. All right, so we got a face, and we'll cut the side. So I'll do a 2D contour. I'll use a one-inch end mill. Uh, we'll just go ahead and add this tool to our library. Description. One inch in mill. We'll say um, 2.5 long. That's the, that's the cutting length. And we'll call it two and a half uh, flute length. Our cutter is going to be a two flute, one inch diameter. Our shaft diameter. It's going to be 2.5. Overall length, uh, we'll say 4 inches. A lot of this doesn't really matter. Uh, oh, here we go. This actually needs to be 2.5. We'll make this... Uh, Let's see, how should we make this? It's kind of weird. We'll just say it's six inches. Right, the math's <laughs> the math's not quite adding up, but 
What is this? Uh, 2.75, shoulder length, 2.75. You know, just, just to make the software happy, we'll, we'll make that three and a half. That's where we messed up our shaft diameter. Okay. Yeah, we'll call that good. Um, you know, I forget to set my speeds and feeds on that. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and go back to select. And <clears throat> we'll change our, um, our speeds. Uh, my mill goes uh, maximum 4,000 RPM, so I'll go 3,500, keep it a little bit lower. I'll make the ramp speed the same. Cutting feed rate, 20 inches a minute. And we'll make this tool too. Looks good. All right, so my geometry, I'm going to hold my, now see how it wants to select the whole chain? I'm going to hold my alt key down and select just that one segment. My height tab. We'll make these clearance heights uh, 0.1. And we'll go to the model bottom. And we'll go an extra point thousands. Uh, multiple depths. Okay, so we're going two and a half. The, the part's two and a half tall. So uh, we'll go multiple depths. We'll just take two passes. Uh, let's see. We'll make this 1.26. Just like so. All right, let's check out the toolpath he gave us. Um, what we're watching for is our lead in and lead out. I, I don't really like how Fusion does the lead in and lead out. The reason why is because it just barely goes past the, the center of the uh, cutter right there. So what we'll do is we'll increase our, let's see, our tangible fragment. We'll add a hundred thousandths to that. So it'll start off a hundred thousandths sooner and a um, hundred thousandths further. So it's going to look something like this. Alright, so if I rewind a little bit, basically what you're seeing is the center of the cutter is going to go past the end point, 100 thousandths. Alright, so it's going to look something like this. Okay, so since we got that operation done, what we'll do, we'll go ahead and close that out. Well, let's name this, um, we'll name it side cut. So this operation will be ran twice. So basically, you'll face it, you'll cut the side, and then you'll rotate the part 
180 degrees, line everything up, do the same thing again. So operation run one, you'll actually just run twice. Let's go ahead and save. We'll fold that up. Um, we'll close that sketch up that we use for op one, so we don't need that anymore. All right, so after we face it and cut the side and square everything up, we're gonna run it like this, okay? And uh, basically after the first op, um, you're pretty much going to have a part that's 2.75 by 2.5 wide. So it should look, so you'll have this 2.75 dimension and it's 2.5, okay? So what we'll do is we'll cut the, the main geometry features on this, except for this cutout right here. What we're going to do is run 8 at a time as well on a third op. Um, we probably won't do that on this video. Um, just because it's kind of unnecessary to add that in this video. Um, I'll add that into the document. I want to, I want to get some pictures of that being done. But anyway, so maybe we're going to look at is we have five millimeter holes, which is, uh, 0.197. So we got four of them and we have these slots right here, which we'll pre-drill them. Okay. And then we'll use a uh, three-quarter inch cutter to cut this out. All right, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and rotate it. Hmm. We'll rotate it like this. All right, so we'll do our next setup. Our top of our part will be right here. The X looks good. The origin we'll make right here. We'll go to our stock. We'll just set, uh, we'll do a relative size box and do our uh, stock offsets to zero. So it looks something like this right here. All right, we'll name this op two. And so all we gotta do, everything's squared up. We have to cut out this uh, this hub clearance, do these slots, and drill the five millimeter holes. Okay. Now when we drill the holes and pre-drill the the holes for the slots, what we'll do is uh, we'll center drill everything. So uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I'll start off with a 2D pocket. This is my geometry. And I'm gonna I'm gonna pick up where I left off on the previous tools. So we'll do a uh, half inch half inch in mill two footer, and um, we'll make it tool three, okay? Because the face tool is tool one, the one inch cutter was tool two, and the half inch in mill will be tool three. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this to my library. Do a flat in mill. And I'm just going to change the diameter, make that half inch. Uh, everything else, not really too worried about. Doesn't really affect the code any. Uh, RPM, I'm going to go with 3,500. Cutting feed rate, we'll keep it at 40 inches a minute. Ramp speed, 40 inches a minute. Plunge. I'm good, thirty. I, I like to keep my plunge different than uh, the rest of the cutting feed rates because if I need to go and edit the code, if it's a different feed rate, I could do a search, find it, find all, and replace, and it just it just makes things easier. Post processor. This will be tool three. Go ahead and set that. All right, so I got my geometry selected, my tool. We'll do our heights now. 
I'll make each one of these uh, clearances offsets 0.1 and we'll go to the model bottom and an extra 20 thousandths for uh, the cut. Just to make sure we don't have a burr. We go all the way through. Uh, stock to leave. We won't leave any stock on this one. It's just aluminum, so it'll cut pretty nice. Um, let's see. Multiple depths. We'll do point one two. Uh, we'll go 1.35 or yeah, yeah, yeah 35 that's because we added an extra 20,000 so I'm going to take in two passes and let's see we want to ramp do a helical ramp in a two degree angle that's good so it should look something like this Okay, so that should be fine. I'll name this uh, pocket home clearance. All right, so the next thing we'll do is we'll start center drilling these holes. So I'm going to go to my library and pick a center drill. This one should be good. Um, you know, we, we'll change that number. That we'll make this tool four. All right, so I'm going to tilt my model. I'm going to select each one of these faces right here. My height, do 100 thousandths clearance. We'll just select an origin. I'm going to go 30 thousandths deep. And I don't need pet drill or anything. Just a basic drill operation. And we're just going to slightly drill a, a little pilot hole. I'll name this center drill. Alright, so next step. We'll go ahead and drill V's. Now, if this is a, let's see, an eighth inch uh, drill hole. Let's see, I think, I think the original print I gave you was actually um, three millimeter. I'll, I'll give you an updated print. It's supposed to be three mil or three millimeter. I'm, didn't think I changed it, but apparently I did. If it's a three millimeter slot, what you want to do is drill it with a three millimeter drill or, or a little bit smaller, uh, one size smaller, and then drop it in mill down and cut across. Uh, since this one says, um, hmm, we'll, we'll go ahead and do a three millimeter drill. So, Go to my library. I'm gonna select the three millimeter drill. We'll make this uh, tool five. Keep them all in line. Uh, plunge feed rate four inches a minute. 
So we'll select this hole, this one, this one, and this one. I'll make my clearance offsets 0.1, and we'll go to the whole bottom. Plus, we'll drill, um, drill the tip through the bottom, and we'll we'll go to extra twenty thousandths. All right, so we'll, we'll go ahead and peck drill it. All right, we'll name this our three millimeter, three millimeter drill. And while I'm at it, I'll go ahead and drill the five millimeter holes. So I'm gonna go drill. I'm gonna select each one of these holes. Go to my tool. And I'll select a five millimeter drill. I don't see one, so I'll go ahead and add one. Oops. Wrong one. So we have five millimeter drill. Uh, units, I'll put this on millimeters temporarily. Okay, moves back to inches. That's just the way I do it. You probably don't actually have to do that anymore on the newer version of Fusion, but that's what I do. Uh, cutting feed rate. Go 1500. Plunge at four inches a minute. Retract. That's fine. I see. I think the last tool we left off was at five, so we'll make this one six. We get our geometry set. We'll change our retract types. We'll go to the whole bottom. And you have to select this drill tip through bottom. Uh, we'll go to extra 20 thousandths deep. And we'll put it on pet drill. All right, so I'll name this five millimeter drill. All right, so what I'm going to do now is um, sometimes you can get away with doing a pocket operation, and sometimes it'll give you a little trouble. So you may want to use a 2D contour, but let's go ahead and try pocket. So we'll use a um, three millimeter in mill. I'll go to my library. I don't see a three millimeter in mill, so we'll just add one. Go to flat in mill. Three millimeter in mill. We'll, we'll leave that at inches. Uh, let's just do this. It converts it for us. Cutting data. On uh, I'm using two fluters. Since we're cutting aluminum, I usually open up the spindle as fast as it'll go. Now, because my mill has a max RPM of 4,000, you, you don't want to go the maximum RPM all the time. It's, it's just not good for the spindle. 
So I always drop it down. Whatever the max is, I drop it down about 500. You know, it's like your car. You don't want to redline your car. I mean, just because your car has a certain uh, acceleration and speed, you know, you don't want to drive full speed everywhere. Um, you, you know, your motor's not going to last long. Cutting feed rate, now, it's a little in mill, so we're going to go slow. We're going to go 10. Plunge feed rate. Now, on a plunge of an end mill, you're usually not cutting anything, so I usually go faster. Because you're kind of, you're more rapiding, you're more feeding to position to, to start cutting. Okay, so we'll make this tool 7. Hit set. Okay, so our geometry, we'll go ahead and start on this one. Our bottom, we'll go through uh, model bottom plus uh, or extra twenty thousandths. So it should look something like this. Okay, we won't leave any stock since we're cutting aluminum. It should cut pretty nice and kind of be done with it. Um, we'll go multiple depths because it's a little in mill. We'll go, uh, we'll go 35,000 stuff a cut. Okay, so leading only that, this is where things get a little bit tricky. Uh, because you don't have much clearance in here, you have to, um, you have to pretty much minimize your lead in. So, I'll make this five thousandths my safe distance, and I'll also make that five thousandths. We'll make this five thousandths, and we'll we'll do a pre-drill. Let's see if this works. Sometimes, sometimes fusion the fusion updates may change things. So we 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 drilled it right there. Let's see if it gives us a tool path. Okay, so see, it didn't give us a tool path. I hit simulate. There's no tool path right there, right? And the reason why there's still some kind of conflict with clearance, basically, if you measure this, I don't really have any room right here, okay? Now, you got two choices what you do. You can, uh, you can use a smaller end mill or... Um, Or uh, reduce your lead in and lead out. Um, let's let's do this. Let's edit our end mill. So instead of a three millimeter, let's use a a three thirty seconds end mill. Alright, so we'll right click on this and go generate. And it still didn't give us a tool path. Let's see what's going on here. This is where things get tricky. Basically, say say you only had a three millimeter slot. Uh, this case is is actually an eighth inch. I think the the first video I did it was three millimeter. Um, I had I had actually changed that design to get a bigger end mill in there, but we'll we'll assume it's uh we'll assume it's three millimeter, just so it this video kind of goes with the other video. But uh, so you want to do is um, basically so you got three millimeter, which equals point one one eight, right? So you got to think if your if your um, end mill. So your slot is 0.118. If your end mill is 3.30 seconds, which is roughly 98 thousandths, 
that leaves you twenty thousandths uh, difference, right? Now, the problem that, that that's per side, okay? So if you dropped right in the middle, you would have you would have twenty thousandths diameterally, but really you'd only have like ten thousandths clear. So we'll make the safe distance one one thousandths. Sometimes you got to tinker with these. You got to make you got to play around and keep getting the the clearance uh, where it drops in and leads into the material. Sometimes you gotta keep going smaller and smaller um, to actually get it to work. See, it still didn't work. All right, let's do this. Um, And it still doesn't give us a tool path. All right, there's something else we gotta look for. Uh, our tolerance, make that one thousandths. Um, we'll check our maximum step over too. That's probably what's interfering. Uh, basically, the math doesn't doesn't add up. If your maximum step over is eighty nine thousandths, it's gonna compute. You know passes at 89 thousandths plus those clearance passes or lead in uh, distances add up the, the cumulative you know distance from the different lead ins it has uh we'll make this uh, 0.096 and that did it okay so basically when you're dropping an end mill into a slot and doing a pocket or 2d contour you kind of sometimes you gotta fiddle with the geometry a little bit because uh, your cutter, if it's at 330 seconds, basically what the problem is, is your step over, uh, your step over distance. Where'd it go? Ah, here he goes. Is, uh, basically, what you may have to do sometimes is make this almost the diameter of the cutter. Okay? So if you're using an eighth inch cutter, you know, try making it 0.124. I always try to keep it a little bit smaller than the actual cutter size. Because uh, then you may have some kind of geometrical conflict uh, with something else. So in this case, our end mill is 98,000. So I made this 96, okay? You could probably do a straight 98. Uh, I mean, even 97 would work. But I, I usually try to keep it like one or 2,000 smaller, Okay. Uh, you really don't have a choice, but, uh, you know, we're only taking 35,000 step of cut and going 10 inches a minute. That, that's why is because we're almost utilizing the full diameter of the cutter. So have you ever had trouble with it not giving you a tool path on a, on a little slot like that or a pocket? Uh, it's going to be your maximum step over. So that distance plus... You know, the safe distance and your lead ins. Your lead ins and lead out. But that seems to work. What I usually do is I get one working pretty good. We'll make sure make sure it's going through. You see the toolpath is going through. So I usually get them working pretty good. And then I'll duplicate these. Okay, so I'll right click. Go to duplicate. Duplicate. So we got four slots. So we'll just duplicate each one of these. Alright. So I they keep track of which one's which. I like to look at it as like, you know, like patterns. Um, because it's kind of like a circular pattern. Or you know. Yeah, you can't use a circular pattern, but it's kind of like one. Uh, I usually imagine this is a clock where the clock hands would be. So this would be like our one o'clock pocket, our four o'clock, our seven o'clock, and uh, our eleven. So what we'll do is we'll name this eleven o'clock. I will name it eleven o'clock slot, but we'll, we'll just name it pocket. I'm sure y'all know why. This one would be our one o'clock. Oops. Let's 
This would be our four o'clock. And our seven o'clock project, okay? Now we're not through yet, so we got our eleven o'clock. Now each one of these is the same tool path. So we get it we gotta reassign the geometry and the um, the pre drill plunge location. So I'll do is I'll go to edit, I'll go to geometry, clear this one out, and then select the geometry for our one o'clock. And we'll also change the pre drill position. So we'll make it that arc. And it should be good. We'll go to our four o'clock, edit, clear this out, select our four o'clock pocket, clear out our pre drill position, and select the pre drill location. And we'll do the same thing on the seven o'clock. Oops, wrong one. Change out our pre drill. So we'll clear this out. Select that. All right. So let's go ahead and simulate the whole the whole toolpath or the whole program. And that's our toolpath. So we'll hit post process. We'll call this the SC for solid core, because this is the this is the motor mount plate for a solid core printer. Op two. Uh, so in the settings here, I like to use G00 and G28, and I don't preload the tool. And it should be good. I'll save this to the desktop for now. And here's our program. Okay, so I got that. Um, I know I said I wasn't going to do the third op, but I guess while we're at it, um, if you wanted to do the third op, you could um, bring that rectangle back. And I would suggest doing eight pieces at one time. You'd have to make sure they lined up good. And what I would do, what you could do, actually, is actually just duplicate this first program. We'll bring it down. And we'll make this uh, op three. And instead of having this face right here, delete that. What we could do is just take this side cut right here. Um, now our origin is backwards. Um, let's change that. I'm going to go to edit. And we'll flip the Z. Make sure we didn't screw up any of the stock settings. Okay, so... Hmm. 
let's see, we'll change this to this. The reason why is I get I get flipped the Y. No, that's right. All right, I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna put the stock how it's gonna look in the machine. So it's gonna look something like this, right? So what I'll do is I'll just change my selection point and put my hmm. My selection there. Where's my Z at? And my Z is still on the bottom. I don't like that. So we'll clear out that Z and put it on top. And we'll re. We'll redefine our uh, origin. Uh, let's flip the Z again. And it does not want to doesn't want to move, so I'll put it on a stock box point. And put our origin right there. Looks good. And what I'll do, since I duplicated that first operation, I'll just go to edit and the geometry will actually be a whole now I want to select this segment. But it's, what it's doing, it's wanting to select the whole chain, right? So I'll hold my Alt key down on my keyboard. And I can select that one segment. I'll keep the same clearance settings, but my my bottom height, what I'll do is I'll put that on selection and select this face right there. So it's going to go that deep. And you got to make sure you clear this out, though. So it looks something like that. Um, 2D contour, so we'll go multiple depths. The distance from here to here is 0 0.787. So what we'll do is we'll take it, we'll take it in two passes. Uh, so we'll go 0 0.787 divided by 2. And we'll take, we'll do a rough pass as well. Uh, if I don't do a rough pass, what it's going to do... Okay, so you see how it only selected just that right there? So why did it do that? The uh, reason why is because we set up our stock, but what we have to change is um, you don't want to do your tangible distance, you want to do your lead out. So. We'll, we'll make this um, where they're not the same. And um, so our stock is, our stock distance will be two inches up because we're running eight at a time. And this is a quarter inch, right? So it's a 1.75 difference. So what I'll do is my lead out, I'll make 1.75 inches. Okay, so notice it went this direction right here, right? That's because on my linking tab, I have a, uh, my lead out is at 9 degrees. Uh, I think it's zero. Let's double check this. It's good to put it uh, on a view where you can see above it. And it should look something like this. Looks good. Uh, you may want to change. Not sure how well that'll cut. You may want to change your uh, your step over distance. I'm just gonna kind of guess a number. Let's see. That didn't really change too much. Should be taking it two passes though. That probably that probably cut all right. You'll know real quick if it doesn't. So it comes across, then it gets closer to the stock or to the cutout. Then it goes full depth.
And that's our op three. We'll name this um, point seventy seven cutout. It doesn't really matter what you name it, just name it something that you know it's going to be. All right, that, the reason why I named it that was because, you know, it's point seven eight seven. But that's it, guys. So you got op one, which you're going to face the part and cut the side. And you got op two, where you actually run the geometry. And you can always, when you're through, you can always come back and hide that sketch. And you get op three, where it does the cutout. So the stock's gonna be in this orientation. And make sure you hit save. So you have three operations. So you would post the code for each operation. So you go to post process, and this would be your op one, and you have to have a corresponding program number. This would be your G code. But that's pretty much it. Uh, if you got any questions, ask me, you know, let me know in the comments section. And I'll put this document in the, uh, in the direction, um, I'm sorry, in the description section. All right, so y'all can just download this. But uh, that's pretty much it.